find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. It's time to get techie, get geeky. It's the awesome cast ready right here in Pittsburgh, PA, in the uh, Mayhem Studios. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, MikeSorg.com, Sorgatron.com, SorgatronMedia.com, all over the place. Back here in the studio, no fuzziness this week. John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. How's it going? They weren't, Was I fuzzy that no, last you weren't week? Terribly, I mean, you're, it's never perfect. It's just never perfect because it is what it is, and it's a technology that we have, and 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 it's just better to have you in full, uh, full blast HD webcam quality as we I, have I, in know, here. I'm gonna plug in. I'll, I'll, let's do a test next week. I'll I'll plug in an, an external HD high quality webcam. You're using you're using what that right that that MacBook right. I'm using the camera in the cinema display. In the cinema display. So I have the Apple 27-inch Thunderbolt oh, how cinema old? display. Oh, and so that should be a little newer. It's, it's pretty darn. It's new. probably not, and, and 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 that's like a computer that's connected. It's not. It's not something on Wi-Fi, right? Right. I mean, I'm sure it's fine. I'm I'm sure it's probably our end, to be honest. Uh, I'm never going to get a pure HD signal unless I get like some decent computers. Now I had AJ kind of hitting me up with some uh, cool little like $160 versions. I just need, um, we have a Patreon. You can help for that. Maybe I'll set that as a was goal. It, was it one of the little, like the size of a phone computer that's HDMI It looked out? like it. It looked like Across it. Me that. I'm like, that's perfect for a TV. And so like just for, um, but I'm thinking just for like this thing just does Skype and Hangout. Mm-hmm. Like that's it. And we just put a little stack over here. They go to monitors. They go to input, output, input. Good to go. You know, that that's that's my dream to be able to do something like that. Even like I, I was looking at the way they did the Skype Asaurus at Twit and it was very like, you know, there were like two hundred dollar slim computers that they stacked in the corner and they brought them out to these displays that they had as a four up display so they could show everybody. And device that's slim, you can double side tape and tape it to the back of the just, monitor. You can tape it to the back of the desk. Mm. Just whatever. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> getting geeky out the gate here. Uh, you can get geeky with us over at awesomecast.net. Uh, we're also awesomecast on the Facebook, the Google Plus, and the Twitters if you want to converse with those us on there. Uh, we put out clips and comments from the week, uh, as well as new stories that we're looking at for the next show. Uh, so if you want to submit anything, we actually have a few submissions from discussions this past week uh, that we have uh, in the line up the, uh, today you can join us also join us live tuesday night at live.sogertronmedia.com just like juggalo john wheels is right now mad mike um wow that's interesting some breaking news i guess rocket just exploded in virginia unmanned test rocket uh on a platform wow Ooh. there's some bad tech news um but, but there you go uh we can also look for the awesome cast on itunes stitcher spreaker iheart radio and youtube um and uh a big a shout out but you know we did uh extra life this past weekend 24 hour gaming marathon uh we just selected to help the uh saint vincent's children's hospital up in erie pa uh really kind of try to help out a, a smaller a smaller hospital that maybe doesn't get as much attention as the ones here in pittsburgh uh so we uh did that rose uh, uh about 950 dollars. you can still donate uh the 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 uh the ad at the side of awesomecast.net or sorgatronmedia.com. It's going to be live for a while. And if you go over to the social media, there should be an, on a post shortly over on uh, insertcointobegin.com. I did a three minute, I did the 24 hours in three minutes uh, video over there. So go check that out so you can kind of see how that went and how tired and droopy our faces go. And, and at what point did I start putting a monkey head on? Yeah, uh, it got fun. And I got, I got a, a, a guest come in and my, my nephew who happened to be in town for a judo competition. <laughs> so, Where was that at? Uh, uh, Keystone Oaks. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Both him and his girlfriend participated. Interesting. Yes. Little ass kickers, those guys. So, anyways. Um, she's a keeper. Or at least don't break up with her in, in arm's length, because she can kick his ass, probably. Anyways, um, with that, we have some fan interaction this week. Oh. Or fan or 
something. YouTube comments. Of all things, we got YouTube comments this week. Um, one actually, it may be from the week before. It's from an older video uh, from Awesomecast 117 and versus, uh, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 217. This is, of course, 222. Uh, we, we did a cl- <laughs> we've been doing clips on the YouTubes uh, because it just seems to make more sense for you know people finding those. Uh, and one, we, we were talking a few weeks ago about how Siri works. Like, or hey Siri. Hey Siri. Well, I just double checked mine's plugged, not plugged in. Um, and uh, you know, we were we were like, oh, you know, is it going to pop up whenever we're watching something and they say hey Siri? By the way, that's happened to me a couple times listening to other podcasts. I've had it happen with the Xbox. The yeah, Xbox yeah, One. Xbox has been notorious for it, of course. Yeah. But we did get a comment here from from uh, HG eight one two three two. I don't know. Um, I tried to watch this video on my iPad while I was plugged in, and every time one of you said, hey, Siri, it would register and take me out of YouTube. Sorry about that. And it just did again. And it just did again. <laughs> I'm, oh, oh, I'm so sorry about that. That thing you say when you're speaking that to thing an you Apple say. product. When every time I say, in. mm-hmm, it does it again, you know. Um, and also, last week, we talked about Microsoft Zim, XIM. Yep. Um, we had a response uh, from Steve Ickman? That's, I'm guessing I'm, it's I'm, I'm thinking. I, we're like, who is this guy? We looked back, um, and under his Google, Google Plus profile, uh, he says he's a software engineer at Microsoft's Fuse Labs working all things social. Very awesome. cool. Well, he he stated in, in, in uh, response to our, our short video uh, we cut out last week from talking about the app, and this is the one where you could share the pictures across apps and we were kind of discovering that you could do it without the app through a browser on your phone. Uh, Hey guys, thanks for checking out Zim. Uh, Glad you figured out that others don't need uh, the app installed to Zim with them. So we're using this as a verb. This is what we just learned from the source. Dear Uh, Webster's Dictionary. Dear Webster's Dictionary. (laughs) Ready that slot for Zim. I know X isn't crowded. Um, That was, uh, it goes back to, to, uh, that was one of our creep, our key principles. We didn't want you to have to think about whether your friends have the app installed or not uh, for it to work. I also wanted to point out that it works at any distance, so you don't actually need to be in the same room for it to work. You can be on a telephone call with someone and Zim with each other while on speakerphone. Thanks again for the fun video. Smiley face. Um, that's That actually broadens my th- thoughts on this one, because you could do something like every room at a pod camp. You could do something um, I could be on a phone call with my mother and be like, here, check this out. And right. what is, if I recall, did it text a link? It texts a link. It texts a link. It's like, mom, click this link that just came over to you. Because I know she's got an iPhone. I know she'll be able to handle it. Or anybody else I know has an Android phone or something. Or I could actually be like, hey, what do you? Ha- what kind of phone do you have over there, right? As, as long as it's a smartphone. As long as it's a smartphone. Browser. I was like, hey, you got, you, you got a smartphone over there, right? I was like, hold on a second. I'm going to send you a text. Da, 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 da. Take care of that. Um, that's going to be that's going to be really useful. I mean... I guess, it, it, well, you know, here's here's my thoughts. It's like, well, why don't I just text them? Why don't I just message them the picture or something? But if you want to show them more than one thing. And you, I look at it as it's something you're going to be interacting with a person and you're going to be advancing to the next picture. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that's where it's not going to be something. You're just going to send them a link and then say, hey, you're on your own. From my understanding is it advances as you advance. Yeah. So you're you're gonna have you're gonna have to so be I'm controlling it. you're controlling I'm controlling what they see. So I mean, I've been like because uh, I, I like the idea of like trying something like this you know when we do like the podcast meet and greets or mm-hmm. at podcast or something uh, between this and the the, the Google Plus Chromecast mm-hmm. Photo Wally app. Um, so I think uh, you know this really kind of opens up some of those possibilities there. But I think you guys I guess you need still a central controller. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody somebody that kind of mans that um but still it is it, it's i think there's some applications we can work out with this well, and one of the things that speaking of the pronunciation of steve ickman's name i think that's one thing that that we actually have at work in our in our em- employee profiles that would mm-hmm. help google plus out we can actually record the pronunciation of our name oh, really in our employee profile so I can, and it's very simple to use, right? You go to you you go to your personal profile, and there's a button that says what What's the name pronunciation? Is this like one of those kind of internal social network? Yeah, kind of it's things? an internal social network. But I, I think it's something that a lot of maybe not necessarily for Facebook as much because it seems like you're 
It's you're curating you know. your your yeah. friends list, but where things like this and Google Plus is, you're keying into people on YouTube, and then you're bouncing back and Google forth. Google Plus to is that again. I, I'm starting to find the. I'm starting to find the professionals. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to get into the podcast groups. I'm starting to get into some of the other things, uh, and I'm starting to see that. And there are some people that are like, I have no idea how to say your name, sir. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know when we get in there. Um, so Google, get on that. There you go, Google. This is a or hey Microsoft. Yeah, since we there's there's a guy over there. Um, and but this is the what did he say? What was the name of the labs? They said um, Fus- the, fusion the fuse fuse labs. fuse labs, and which I believe is you know we've been seeing a lot of really interesting Microsoft apps come out. It's been really kind of exciting to see what's what's been happening there. I'm looking forward to Sway. 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 Steve, if you can get me into the Sway beta. <laughs> That'd be cool. That'd be, <laughs> That'd be amazing. Uh, but no, it's a different Microsoft over there, and I like to see that. I definitely like to see that. I was considering. Can I? Can I throw a crazy idea at you? Um, oh, what was the reason? Oh, because I wanted to try. I, I was thinking about like I need to toss like Windows on here to try to better use this powerful. Wirecast has some difficulties with Macs. I, get, I noticed. Get the ten. Well, that's what I was thinking. Like, do you think it's it's crazy of me to want to grab the ten preview and throw it on? Uh, I'm running bootcamp? on my. I'm running on a Surface Pro with no issues. You know issues. what? You yeah, whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever, man, whatever. I, I got it. I got it kicking on the Surface Pro. My my VPN stuff for works. We're gonna do that. I think, solid. I think that's gonna be the project for the week. I have the ISO sitting on my Google Drive mm-hmm. on every computer. <laughs> so so. If I have one of these with this DVD drive still, I'll uh, burn that's it the off. only thing I don't know if you can do. I had to copy it. They they tell you in the instructions to copy it to an external device, like a thumb drive or a removable SD the ISO? card. You, you open the I think you open the ISO and you copy the files. Oh, there. So or you even... do something because I'm I'm not sure if during the reboot process if it. Do you well, know what I mean? Here's the other thing: How do I run boot camp on a computer that doesn't have a CD drive? How does that process work? I don't know. How do you set up boot camp? How do I set up boot camp? Like, are they set to say we you're probably bringing your own DVD drive or are they set for USB devices? I don't know. This is going to be the experiment for the week, probably. I think I have a little bit more time this week than I have been. Uh, so so we'll work on that. But anyways, just just a thought. So, so, let's... You, so it can so it can grab boot camp can grab the installation files from an ISO. It can. So I can have so I got an ISO sitting right here. I can go ahead and boot camp this. But you do need. A USB drive. I do need a USB drive for Windows on the Windows side or the boot camp side for when you install Windows in boot camp. How big is this thing? So it says. Uh, da, 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 da. Nah, it is like it's like four point one. I can see putting it on CD, but hold on a minute. Do, do I need a bootable? Do Do I need to do anything special for bootable, or is it just a file on there? It's just it's it's, it's just like the CD auto run, right? Yes. Okay. So so maybe. so the new boot camp assistant prompts you and it says you need a USB flash drive and a Windows seven or later version ISO image hmm. downloaded. From well, it's later. Microsoft. Okay. So you can you can okay well. I'm gonna play with that. We're gonna play with that a little bit. My only my only reservation is I'm still already like taxed for hard drive space on here. So mm, we'll see what will we do about create. that. Kind of juggling all the files. Like I, I just like drop my project files in here for a video I'm working on, and it's synced to Drive. And then when I'm done with the project, I just turn it off in Drive, and I go th- toss it out of Drive on the computer upstairs because it's already up there. An entire video project. It's already up in the cloud and up on my computer upstairs. It's attached to all the drovos. Very cool. Drag it over. It's out of Google Drive. It's not on the laptop anymore. You just freed up all your space. Project management. Until I get to those bigger, bigger projects that need all the stuff that's on the drovos, then I have to go on the on the Mac Mini. Anyways, awesome things of the week. Let's get into this. Um, let's have you go first since I just ranted about all the things I wanted to do. Mine's very quick and it's easy and I know surprise, surprise. I actually picked up the oh, iPad 2. Oh, it's already thumb printed with, up. With, with, yeah, it is thumb printed up. With fingerprint ID. Mm-hmm. Ooh, well, that's my work stuff. Um, <laughs> there's, there's a free plug for it for an enterprise mail solution. Um, but no, I so far loving it. 
I can definitely see a speed increase. And I'll be honest with you, I was sold merely on fingerprint ID. Okay. Uh, no, I'm not going to NFC with this. No, I'm not take. I hate this. You're not going to Apple I'm not Pay gonna this take thing. Pictures like this. But I'll tell you what. Tar- there, there weren't the one thing I did notice, and I'm guessing it's because they didn't do like an official launch. Mm-hmm. They just the devices just kind of started showing up in stores, um, and in people's mail. Um, there weren't many cases to be had, so I'm actually I'm really happy with this Targus case it kind of it has this three-dimensional look to it mm. kind of like a honeycomb type look um the thing i like about it is the the cover actually latches kind of into place so then when you also flip it behind it's you can latch it into place um it was interesting because a lot of the case manufacturers on their on their packaging would say like New iPad parentheses generation six parentheses and parentheses. That's a problem. Like they didn't know what it was going to be called. And they never do, <laughs> especially. And then, and then there's some of them when you go to like the the dollar store where they have iPhone keys like five below around here. Um, they just don't care yeah. at that point. They're just like, oh, yeah, we're not changing. It. But because I because I don't have the keyboard case anymore on an older version of Awesome Cat or an older number of Awesome Cast, I actually have. Where is it? A Bluetooth external Bluetooth keyboard that allows you to connect up to three devices. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually, oddly enough, carrying this with me, and it allows me to connect my phone, my lap, whatever laptop I'm carrying, and my tablet. I've been playing with this idea. So you got the brand new one there, right? Yeah. Um, somebody's in the market for a new laptop. We're looking at the Air, the iPad, no, the, the Mac Air, MacBook Air. Mm-hmm. I feel like. The iPad might be enough. Well, it depends on what they're doing. Word. It's probably definitely enough. It's probably Which is enough. actually... Hold that thought for my one of the things, the news stories really? I have down towards the okay, bottom. Okay, we'll hold that thought. But, but it's but, the iPad Air 2. Wait, yeah. The iPad Air 2? I don't even know what they call it anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, it's the iPad... Uh, it's the iPad Air 2. Um, fingerprint ID... It has the NFC. The, it has NFC in it, which, like I said, um, I doubt I'm going to be Apple paying with this. Are you, can you pull it out of the case to see how thin it is? There, it is, and, and that's the other thing about this case. I really like the way they designed how it goes into the case, and mm. this is going to be the funny part. It's actually not all that easy to get out of the case, but it uses. Oh, like oh you this. don't have to if it's a pain. No, it's okay. Um, it is extremely extremely thin wow. <laughs> like and i will say the the other interesting thing is the anti-reflection it is a lot less reflective they talked all about that coating they were putting on it mm-hmm. um it is a lot less reflective but whatever they did with that anti-reflective coating when it's sitting on my desk at work i get zero reflection off the ceiling but it has this weird kind of bluish reddish odd tint to the glass from an angle when it's not powered up which actually makes it look like the backlight is on but it's a black screen mm. you know what i'm talking about like if you yeah turn your so. tv on and don't have anything plugged into a component jack yeah 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 and it's yeah. just a black screen it says like ox one on it but it's like the lit up it black looks screen. almost lit up from certain viewing angles. And then you're like worried. Like, am I, wait, what's going on here? Am I but losing is, my battery? What, what's happening? It is super, super light. I, I've, a lot of people have been saying that the, the battery, because it's smaller, they're not getting as good battery life. I feel like I'm getting just as good of battery life. Um, all my devices, I don't care what they are. Laptop, that's well, la- yeah, anything that I have that's portable, I have already gotten in the habit of raising and lowering the brightness as needed. Hmm. Um, and I think it's because it actually gives me a headache if the screen's too Ooh. bright. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Really? See, I and it the, doesn't matter. I don't care what device it I is. I have the problem where it, I'm it playing a makes game my head hurt. on usually on the phone. Like mm-hmm. I, I feel like I'm squinting when I'm playing a game. Then I look, it's like oh, I need to turn that brightness up. It's like it's like halfway down. Maybe it's like not like I want it to be a little bit brighter so I can see everything, all the graphics. Mm-hmm. You know, again, playing a game mostly. I, I usually don't have a problem with. 
like even pictures or anything like that, but, um, or video. It actually depends to me. It depends on like if I'm outside or inside or what the lighting situation is Mm -hmm. like at work, the sitting at halfway is, is well bright enough outside. I do bump it up above, above midway. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've been pretty darn impressed so far. Um, I picked it up at the Apple store on Sunday. Thank you, Jess. Um, (laughs) You were a peach to deal with. Nice. And you know what? I, the other thing is, is I looked at it as the six, there's no more 32 gig model. So and and I actually had been buying the 64 gig model. So it was like a hundred dollars off to me for this year because they they're they, they just switched to the mid mm-hmm. middle of the road is now 64 mm-hmm. gig, which I really, really like because I throw movies on here. I do. I sync all my photos and whatnot. So I don't know, so far, so good. Awesome. Awesome. I what bet. do you got? What do I got? Uh, no, I don't have anything. I, I actually do have a physical thing I want to show off. But I want to wait until I have another week with it to see how it is. Because I've literally used it like twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably three-ish times since I got it. Um, so I, so what I have, uh, uh, I found a really good story today. Um, we've talked about RFID tags here before, I'm sure, in, in several methods. Um it's really weird. I had a really weird time, Chilla, because I'm. I've told myself I'm not going to watch any NFL this year. And I've really kind of like separated myself from sports, despite having a gig every Friday, shooting high school football, and playing several hours of NFL Blitz over the weekend. Uh, maybe I'm coming back. I don't know. But then I saw this story, which made the NFL kind of cool again after all their bad publicity this year. Um, I'm in the wrong document. I'm definitely, definitely in the wrong document. I'm looking at an RFID chip. I pulled up the wrong one. There it is. RFID chips being used in uh, the NFL. Apparently about half of the stadium. So are there 32 teams right now? Maybe more now? Um, Half of them are already outfitted with uh, the sensors for this. They're putting the RFID chips in the uniforms, actually. Um, Two of them. And I think they have, did they say gyroscopes or something of the sort? Uh, but anyways, uh, between the two of them, one, there's a fail safe. And two, they know which direction they're facing because you have a little okay. bit of a, you know, a little bit of an axis to work with then. Um, they said basically they're RFIDing everything except the ball. And the ball they're working on. They're actually working on one to go in there that it, they need to make sure that it doesn't affect the weight or the feel of the ball. I was, yeah, that's what so I was going to say. That's, that, that's going to be tough. That's going to be a little touchy. You're going to um, have quarterbacks complaining that, you know, I, it, that, that pass it just wasn't good because the RFID tag in there, it's, it's weighing it down. They'll, they'll find something to whine about. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, so right now, I guess they're only doing it in certain instances. I guess uh, CBS's uh, Thursday Night Football, for instance, has been able to take advantage of this. Um, for instance, um, kind of replacing that idea of the color commentary, taking the telestrator and crudely drawing lines to show their path and everything. Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, we've seen, we've seen still in the past several years kind of the madden ification of game video gamification of what you mm-hmm. see where they put the uh circle around their feet and it's just like what you see on the madden video game um they're able to do that to a greater deal um somebody like one breakaway pass or uh, a catch uh, they caught the guy going 20 miles per hour for instance on his run you know getting those kinds of stats that you just don't see um, what what will be interesting is if they can start to use this. And I was actually going to make a joke. And are we going to get are we going to get cool streaks like they used to in the NHL with the puck? And we're going to be able to see it behind things. <laughs> kind of. I, I but, kind of. Yeah. I don't think you're going to do it live, but um, I mean, you're going to get stuff like there's a visual visualization here of like, you know, here's how far like right here. It, it, it has the two. Uh, the, the the people on each team, and I get, I'm presuming these are the two that made contact with each other, or one got away from the other, or whatever the case might might have been, right? And say, they said, hey, they started off 9.5 yards away from each other, right? Um, so they're very. Uh, this is zebra motion, and here's actually a picture, uh, a thumbnail for this video of one of the sensors on the shoulder pads, actually. Um, so you can kind of see if it's on each shoulder pad like that, how it would kind of, um, you know, uh, give you some pretty good location there. What- what will be interesting is, will they be able to use this in the future? And probably not right now, but in the future for where there's not actual video of a specific play and it's been it's been called back for review. I think so. Like, I think absolutely. 
and and to touch on the point of the ball, can, will they be able to tell when they get this working in the ball if the ball hit the ground? Like, like I could definitely see this. Just just imagine every player in the ball, and and they're actually I think they also said there's RFIDs in the uh, yard markers too, okay. and I think there might have been something else they put it in. Um, the the entire article the article is um uh NFL real time motion tracking uh, uh, uh how the NFL tracks everything on the field but the ball on theverge.com tremendous article it kind of goes through it they have some video about it too um but uh, yeah they they said basically everything so uh, they're hoping i think by next season to have everybody retrofitted with it uh, across all the teams all the stadiums so um that's yeah you think about that you could have a, a, a digital representation of everybody standing on the field of the, of the markers of potentially the ball and just have this general. And here's actually a little bit of footage. I think this is what they're doing on CBS um, where they look at the markers of all the players. Mm-hmm. You know, you saw it for a second there. Where What'll be interesting is when Madden takes all this information and then pumps it back into. Oh, and that's the other thing. Games. It adds, it adds to that too. Um, here's the thing they're showing the yards. Look, I'd see the, it's alive. Mm-hmm updating the yards of the person that was covering the guy that got away. Like, that cool. is awesome. I'm going to show no more of that. Cause I don't want the NFL to pull us off. YouTube. So, so get ready for NFL raises in NFL game day subscriptions <laughs> and ticket prices. There's and another everything. one. It's, it's showing the path of uh, the guy that got away. They mentioned the article. Um, I was excited. Just reading this. I didn't even look at the videos yet. <laughs> so, I have, I have not looked. It's tremendous. Um, but no, I, I love this kind of techification of, of this stuff. I mean, I talked to, it kind of throws the, it is kind of on another level, but I, I thought about this the other night. I think we're going to talk about later where we're talking about wearables. And I was thinking about the guys at uh, the tech cocktail uh, event uh, a few months ago that they were putting sensors at the bottom of bats so they can get all that information on what is happening in a swing that you were never able to get before, you know? Um, I mean, it's a science to it. It's sports science. And it's sports tech, and it's it's really cool to kind of follow. So that trump, they, they, I have so many things I could have put in my awesome thing of the week. Is it like a weird atypical week? That like it was like okay, that's awesome. And I actually just watched the first the first of NFL football yesterday. I kind of t- t- <laughs> well, I did like yesterday. No, Tuesday, uh, Sunday, Sunday. I Sunday. watched some that was on, but it, no, it was like I was so like 10 a.m. We're done with the 24 hours. I just went up on the couch and laid down, saw tweets about like what there's a football game at nine in the morning. And it's the one over in London. Oh. And, and and Missy just left the TV on all day because there's like three games on. <laughs> so I just kind of like slept watch like two and a half games. So, uh, eh, whatever. It's soothing. And plus. I still like that's, you know, I don't get to watch a lot in full, full HD, actually more so because I really like the quality of Netflix and HD. Like, I don't notice. I think it looks tremendous. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, but but I always just enjoyed watching football because like this is like HD and I can see the grass and my TV finally getting out full use out of it because it's that yeah. full, not cable stream because I'm on rabbit ears. It's you know. so crystal clear. Oh, it, it, it's amazing. It's amazing. I saw a tweet from somebody. I think it was Bobby F. J. Town. It was like, he, that was like, it's like hockey's awesome in HD or something like that. It's like, well, that's one, that's one sport you can't watch over the air. And oh it's unfortunate. God. I would love to see a hockey game in like un, uncompressed HD. Oh yeah. Even, beautiful. even the watch it on cable has to be kind of rough, right? Yeah. It, it's, it's decent. Um, towards the end of, what when high school or high school college football's off over and 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 regular football nfl's off when i what is it nbc i think starts to pick up some of the hockey games i'll watch it on there because it is just it is beautiful but you can't watch most games let alone penguins games all the time on that uncompressed Mm -hmm. version so that's why, like, whenever I see like them on Game of the Week, I'm like, I'm watching. Mm-hmm. Like, it, like hockey isn't like hockey is one of those that like, you can find a stream on the internet. But my God, is it so horrible to watch? Yeah, you know, you like you have no idea what's going on, even if it's a half decent illegal stream. You know, I mean, an HD cable stream. You're like, ah. Mm. But anyways, um, but we're kind of being little bit of video snobs with that. But it's okay to be us. a video. That's snob. us. But that's what we do. That's what we do. We're geeking. Nobody out. wants a bunch We're of digital geeking. artifacting. No, no. It makes us sad. Certainly not. On the inside. I'm being reminded because I have the WWE network and, and and I remember 
like on cable every time the pyro and the craziness would go off at strobe lights how it would just destroy the feed and now that i have like the stream that's on the digital feed and it goes because <laughs> it's not terribly compressed m-o-b-a-m i don't know what you're doing i mean it's better than some but not better than a lot um anyways on that hey want to give a shout out to our f- hey wait whoa, whoa, whoa. uh what is this turn your turn your iphone into a 3d scanner so your... there's an sorry app. i almost jumped ahead no that's okay there's an app coming out that is it, it it really struck me oddly that this is why they made it but this guy that knows a bunch of food bloggers was tired of 2d images of food and what, what? he what he said he saw was people going around the 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 item and taking multiple pictures to get the picture from the best angle to then post. And so they created this 3d scanning tool for iOS. It's for the iPhone it obviously plays on a lot of the new iOS eight APIs where they're kind of unlocking the camera or the capabilities within the camera. And I, I will say I, from from the looks of it, obviously they're playing this up for food people, but from the looks of it, it's pretty there's certainly a lot more applications. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm like. There's 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 a lot more applications than this. And it, the interesting thing is when when and you, and you have the video up right now, when they take the scan, he just pretty much like waves the phone over like a the magic piece of cake. wand, like a magic wand. It, and like, look, look at him spinning the, he just spins oh, the wow. cake around. Oh, wow. And it's not like it's a bunch of like clipped together photos and it actually uses parallax to then let you tilt. I was pretty impressed with the way they got it to work. Now, I think they said it's going to be out in a couple of weeks. Um, and I'm guessing you're going to have to use their engine to, to, to watch or to play back the pictures. Mm-hmm. But it's a pretty cool idea when you think about it, especially if they can start wireframing stuff for 3D printing, um, things of that nature. It's to me, it's a very, very interesting technology. I'd even like it for like if like old school action figures and like stuff on Chachi's desk at work, like <laughs> just taking the 3D scan and then being able to go around the object. I don't know. I think it's pretty neat. Good show off stuff. I mean, how many three? Mm-hmm. How many of those three D kind of look at this phone on at and wireless.com, dot com? You know, right? For instance, I mean, yeah, that that could be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, definitely gonna look out for this when it's uh, released here. Oh, they're in Zurich, Switzerland, according to their Vimeo. Mm. So, hmm. all right. Uh, with that, uh, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway. Uh, they're providing that great, great pizza. You know, you were mentioning on before uh, mm-hmm. the show there, Chilla. Uh, Delish. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. It was tremendous. I don't know what they did, but it's like they toasted the crust. It was just amazing. Uh, but you can check them out, too. They're in South Hills of Pittsburgh here on Broadway Avenue, where the T-Line runs. Also, they got a second location out down there in Carnegie, PA, not too far away from here. It's just off uh, all that construction junk that's happening uh, on your way out to the airport right now. Um, right on the main street in uh, Carnegie, PA. And they uh, deliver far and wide. They do. They got, they got, they a, got pretty, a big footprint. They got a pretty good range there. Uh, so go check it out. Man, there's another pizza place start opening up. Jets or something. I was so, like, do we really need another pizza place? The one down on Yeah, the, the one that used to be the, the ice cream shop. And then it was the Nathan's there. Hot Dogs. Yeah, Nathan's Hot Dogs. It's like, mm. there's not going to because they got these guys to compete with so there's there's too much good pizza there's like there's like renowned pizza like three roads parallel with each mm-hmm. other over here yeah. um but I don't know. and and i don't know i don't know if i can say this but they're a lot nicer than the people at Beto's. is that is that that's the and i never know which which one's that's, pronounced, that's pronounced which way that's Beto's is that raw cheese tea. place? It's the raw cheese place, Ugh. and they're very uppity for Ugh. this is personal and my my personal uh, uh, experience and thoughts and and wishes uh, do not reflect on Slice on Broadway, our great great sponsor. But but I go down there, and it's the closest pizza place. It's right there. It's right there. I haven't gone there in two years. That's horrible because it's always been a horrible horrible experience for me. 
It's just raw cheese. So it's just raw cheese, man. They're doing ma- they're doing magic down at Slice on Broadway, guys. They're, they're toasting they're doing, it. They're toasting this stuff. They're making they're making they're making art, pizza art over there. So go check it out, sliceonbroadway.com. Follow them on the Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagrams, um, and you'll 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 get hungry. So all right, let's get into some other stuff. We have first of all, uh something called Gink Google Inbox. <laughs> Which this was announced, I think, last Wednesday or Thursday. Um, and I, I was very fortunate. I, our, our friend Roy, who works over at Google, he's like, who needs an invite? I'm like, hi. I saw his post a little too late. And I said, hey, can you throw me one? He's like, oh, I ran out a while ago. So, yeah, I, I saw the post like the, a day and a half later. Mm-hmm. And then that's what Facebook drives me nuts is because you it reorganizes all the posts. Well, then you got to be on the tweeters where everything's real time. Uh, Yes. Or it's not. (laughs) I know that's, that's one of my, that's one of my problems is even finding my, my feed gets too long. Mm -hmm. And I used to be in the habit of like in the morning and in the afternoon and I could, I'm just checking when I have time. I just check it when I have time. It's very chance, whatever I come across. Okay. So that's it. That's it. Um, but I have it. Let me f- first double check. There's nothing really important for me to show off here. Uh, this is the web version of it. So this is my email. And it's just taken my Gmail and put it in this form. Um, so it's it's automatically throwing stuff in a low priority. It's using some of my tags. Uh, purchases, for instance. So like if I go into purchases uh, and you see it does it does thumbnails, right? Or especially like YouTube thumbnails that you see at the bottom of of Gmail's will come up. Um, so like, here's all my PayPal stuff. Here's my iTunes store purchases. I, I, I stat mini. That should be another awesome thing of the week. I'll just leave that out there. It puts, uh, your, um, your stats in the notification notification bar. I haven't, I, I, it's like tremendous. It's it's like a dollar 99 or something. It's like a dollar 99. I'm like, yep, we got it. Uh, you know, my doctor who's are in there. Some, some stuff with maps to, uh, the meet grief for pod camp, for instance. So it's, first of all, it's, it's thumbnailed everything that makes sense. Right. Um, now, if you're on the app for Android or iPhone, it, they release both of them simultaneously. Uh, for iPhone, this is the first time I got to use the iTunes preview. So like the beta app, the test drive, the test drive test flight. To, is a test flight, test flight. Uh, but when, when you click the link, it, go, it looks like the app store, but it says up in, in the top iTunes preview. So, so, so this is the first thing I've seen and experienced that, that, that involves that kind of process. Um, but again, right off the bat, it, 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 let me see if I can pull up how it's, so you can go in here. If you're on the uh, phone, you can actually kind of swipe one way or another and and actually let me see let me see if it lets me swipe because i'm on a touch screen here with the windows computer so like here is loot crate if i okay it doesn't have the swipe function on here uh but i'd be able to swipe like i'll, I'll swipe to the right and that means i'm done with it and it'll go away right if i swipe to swipe to the other way it'll actually snooze it and bring it back up in the list mm-hmm. whenever i say later today I did read about that. tomorrow something like that so it's very it's a very easy way for you to drop in and go nope nope yep yep you know or oh, hey let's deal with that tomorrow so it kind of tasks your email it's a different way to look at your email uh so far i've been able to drop in there and kind of i, I found emails that i missed the normal way in gmail it's like, oh, wow, this guy hit me two days ago. You know, I, I need to address that, you know, or something like that. Just because it gets pushed down from those views because I have priority inbox, mm-hmm. starred, and then the regular. If it gets pushed down that regular and I didn't get to it yet or I missed it because, like, I get so many emails. Just not accessing my email from when I start the podcast on Tuesday at, like, 3 o'clock through to the night. Oh. My email is ridiculous. I'm sure. And that's, like, the largest gap other than the weekend that I don't address my email. Um but this is a kind of a nice way to just jump in and to, maybe between shows, I'll pop in the app and kind of swipe away a few things I know are bad um, or jump in one of my tags because all my tags transfer over as well. So I have all those rules on top of their 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 purchases, their promotions. And I never turned on the promotions tab or anything in Gmail. So this is my first kind of look at that. So I have the promotions tab and I let it just kind of self-populate. Mm-hmm. I'm interested to see what Inbox does because I am a horrible, horrible mail mail user okay so i don't use tags i don't use filters any kind of filters you just have it all in there and i don't delete anything well i don't think that's a problem 
I, now here's so, the other. So when you look at my phone and this, like I know people that are OCD that like I think their heads are going to explode. When you look at the mail icon on my device, which you oh, can't no. see. Oh no! Oh no! There is fifty eight thousand nine hundred and seventy one unread emails. Because the other thing I do is that if it's an email that's kind of like junk mail, like let's pick one. Um, do, 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 do. Somebody tagged me on Facebook. Okay, I can see by the subject who tagged me and that I was tagged on Facebook. I don't need to read that email, but I don't bother <laughs> deleting it either. But you at least like, like you at least like market red, right? Nope. Oh, that's the problem. That's the problem. I at least I don't delete everything, but it's like I at least got to get that not red count down, Mm -hmm. even though I know the stuff not red is most likely stuff I'm never going to get to and really wasn't important in the first place. But there's still a little bit of that. So so one of the nice things about this, and I I know like the first experience, like listen to like Leo Laporte talk about on this week at Google last week, he, you know, he's notorious. He says, I'm horrible female. I have 20,000 on reds, you know, that kind of, you know, that kind of thing. Right. He's like. I just swiped and I'm inbox zeroed for the day. You got a fresh start like that. That's awesome. You know, I can at least look at today and get mm-hmm. rid of everything. There's nothing new being added to the pile. Now, I'm wondering what happens when you swipe. I'm not clear on that yet. I haven't done a one to one comparison. When I swipe this, is it just putting it on red? Is it throwing in trash? What's happening? Because some things I want to just kind of mark as red. But I still want to leave it in there. Does it? go to like isn't there an archive i think i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure it's not deleting it's just marking as red because i've gone back so i'll go back in my regular gmail i'll go under like some of the bacon stuff like the bacon for linkedin because oh my god linkedin notifications um and like half of them are red and i'm like okay those are the ones i did in inbox so i'm pretty sure they just go on red and then i can delete them out whenever i do my my filter checking so i'm i'm interested to see if this comes true but a little birdie told me And it seems like a relatively good source, and I'm not going to give up the source, but I'm hearing that we're going to get a revamped Gmail. And I'm wondering if this is the beginning. I don't think they I don't think they need to just turn this on for everybody. I think that well, that's that's one of the things we were talking about during the show. Right. And we were like, well, how do you do this or how do you do that? I really I really feel like they look at the early adopters and they're like, well, they'll figure so, it out and we'll so give them access. And they're this the... is the Google wave of email. And we're testing it out. And what you're probably going to see, I found it interesting because it's an amalgam of this idea, this one idea that seems completely new with some of the old ideas, including the promotion tabs. And it's kind of meshed them together. But it's one of those, well, if we even drop this as a beta in the middle of Gmail that people can turn on, it is far, far too dr- drastic. But but I'm wondering if they're waiting for us to all figure it out and we know how to use it real well. And then I will turn it on for everyone and then we'll just get the questions. But do you really even need to? Because they already have it separate. I can go to inbox.google.com or I can go to gmail.com. It's the same email. But they're not going to they're not going to keep up. They're not going to continue. Why would as a company, why would you continue to um, develop two different UIs? Because not every user is the same. I, I don't know. I don't think I, I. It's not. It's not one solution to fit them all. So if I go to inbox.google.com, I just get inbox by Gmail. Get it on Google Play. Download it from the App Store. Are you activated on it yet? Have you gone into it? Um, not on the device. Okay. How do I actually? Yeah, I actually went to the phone first. Like the emails. Okay. I hit. I clicked the thing. Went. Got the device. I downloaded it. It like connected me when I logged in on the device, and then then it was like, oh, there's a web version too. Um, I actually do have my first impressions on this from like the less than 24 hours. Uh, I do that podcast. Good morning over at Sorgatron.com. Uh, beginning with some more techie things as things come out like this. And I think that's, I want to use that as a kind of a first impressions as things come out during the week. Um, so if you want to go check that out, Sorgatron.com. Actually, those were my first impressions. And probably the heaviest I used in was it within that time. Uh, and that was before right after that I discovered uh, the web version. So it was basically just the iPhone version. And I discovered how to get it on my uh, Android as well because I couldn't find the invite again to go find the download. Uh, but it's just in the store and it let me in with my account because it saw that I'm logged in as a inbox beta tester. So um, so there you go. 
there you go. Uh, let us know if you got inbox. I'm sure everybody wants an invite. I don't have any. Chilla should have three now. Uh, <laughs> once I log in. <laughs> once he logs in. So go bug him. I won't tell you the other people I invited because I'm not going to do that to them. But you can probably guess. You can probably guess um, if you're listening to this show. So, uh, but yeah, so there's that Google inbox. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, a couple other cool things. Oh, I wanted to, damn it. I wanted to pull it up. The visual, a uh, little update. I didn't put this in here. Uh, update on automatic. Remember that little thing that I got that goes car. on the OBD meter or, um, um, plug on my car and it communicates Bluetooth to my phone. I can get all this information about how I'm driving. It'll do a crash alert thing. And one thing was, one thing was when the check engine light pops on. It finally did over this past week. I was like, oh, no. You know, your first thing is like, okay, I got to get into a shop, take care of it. But it actually pulls up the code, pulls up what that code means. You can Google search on solutions for that code, which I found out is like, yeah, you just have an issue with your coolant. And I looked at it and it was like, okay, maybe I just need to put more coolant in. Turn And, it's, and the phone is like, you know, there's a thing to turn off your light. And it shows you, illustrates what you need to do in your car. And in my case, to it was the light or to recite the light, which in my case is like, okay, turn the engine on, turn or if the engine's on, turn it off, put it in accessory mode, uh, and then turn it on. Like, that was it. I thought it was like something with a pedal. Like, sometimes yeah. it's like, sometimes it's like you put an accessory, like hit brake three times and then turn it on or something like that and that'll clear it. And which they say this isn't, and they're very straightforward. This didn't solve the problem. Um, but if it's still a problem, the light should come back on. Right. So I, so I have that, so I'm, I'm going to do that and see what happens. And if it saved me a trip, you know, and kind of that idea, you know, realize like, this car is 10 years old. This car has 170 miles on it. <laughs> I need to go put change the oil. Actually. Now I'm thinking about it. Um, high mileage, high mileage. Uh, it's got, but it's got some wear and tear on it, but it's nice that I'm able to do this. And update it. Like my wife has a, a what a 2012 Ford Escape. It's got sync, mm-hmm. you know, not the cool Microsoft app one, but it's got the one that talks to you and it gives you updates. It lets you know how many miles until you're 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 em- on empty and stuff like that. Um, you know, but more fuel efficiency, all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's got all the t- you know all the new tire sensors and all that stuff on it that, that's standard anymore. Um, but again, a 10 year old car. I've, I've updated. Yeah. You know, and see, that's awesome. Like that's the one thing I love my monthly reports from nest mm-hmm. and from my car. So I get, I get a report from my car. It gives me like engine status. It gives me tire pressure status. It gives me everything that it saw throughout the month. And I get the same thing from nest about the house and how energy efficient I've been. And I, and I love just the, I, I don't know what the presentations like if, if, on the the user interface but both those user interfaces are beautiful like just to look at everything looks really nice as far as the reporting is concerned then obviously everything's color coded green yellow red um but yeah that's that's where i think the the future is going of that you can update your car but you're also getting reports and and being able to be proactive about what's mm-hmm. going on. I had a really good discussion actually um, at this event, which I guess we can start talking about that um, about Nest. And I'm really like, I you've seen you see you guys can see in the shot that's the that's that's my heater behind him, and that's the shallow edge. Oh, I it. can't. See. <laughs> oh, you've seen you've seen how big yes. that thing is, right? Yeah, it's huge huge and old and probably fairly inefficient but if you were able to add a little bit on like a nest would still mm-hmm. be able to do something with that right right um so i had a good discussion about uh we were talking about automation i was uh, uh at the uh, uh, it was a blogger event basically at the tech shop which i hadn't seen the tech shop so i got to see it you know not extensively but i was like oh this is a tech shop i know where it is now um and i've had a few events come my way but i've just been busy um but uh, it was a, a Verizon Innovations. Um, get into what that is. But we're talking about Nest uh, uh, and 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 uh, how like I get, I'm like I'm like I got an old house. I don't know if my thing. And we were actually I was actually talking about you and your your mm-hmm. home automation stuff. So that was some of the topic of the evening. Um, but they say that if you take your your thing off, you take a picture and you send it to Nest, they'll be like, they'll tell you if it's compatible or not. Yes, which is really nice. And they they have like a, you, you can take the picture. You can use their website and mm-hmm. tell. 
tell it merely what color wires you have. If you can see the coloring <laughs> of the wires. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. And their kit actually comes with everything that you need to install it, which I thought was very impressive. Nice. Too. Nice. So like the, the if you need to restrip the wire or cut it, screwdriver, everything all in the box. So. So this event, and again, I have my kind of next day impressions over at Sorgatron.com for Verizon Innovations. Uh, it was basically, um, you know, the the main message was, and I talked to you a bit about this before the show, they had these uh, Verizon Innovation Labs going on in Boston and San Francisco. Um, it's, I don't want to call it like an incubator, but it's kind of like an assistant. It, it, it's actually to the point where they have competitions with uh, like high schoolers, uh, you know, promoting STEM and everything and other kind of events and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, and this is the Verizon, I believe this is the Verizon wireless part of it because they're really pushing the ways to use 4G LTE specifically, yeah. right? Like a lot of machine to machine type stuff. Yeah. Things of yeah. that nature. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, so the to the point where we went into this room, they had a presentation to tell us about this is what the center is, this is what we are. Hey, we're more than just your phones. Um Talk, you know, they had a bunch of stuff out on the table, which I recognize a lot of it. We talk about a lot of it. They had Wemo there. Mm-hmm. They had uh, a Fitbit, uh, 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 the um, the scale for Fitbit. Mm-hmm. Um, they had some some wireless like drones, which include this little two wheeled one that would jump at you. But everything I, had I it. saw that at the Apple Store. Oh, the they weekend. were like they were like shooting net at people that weren't paying attention. It was pretty fun. Um, but it looks so mean. Like, why do they look so evil? You know, mm-hmm. thanks, Verizon. The guys with the droid sound, <laughs> droid, you know, um, they, they're not subtle. That's the problem with Verizon, <laughs> between the, the droid sound and their, their evil drones. Um, home automation stuff. Uh, they had the hue light bulbs. They had the um, they had a, uh, a, um, a home alarm system that works off of 4G LTE t- chip. I actually got a pitch from somebody at an AT&T wireless store about their version of it. Mm-hmm. And I I wasn't terribly interested in jumping on it yet. You know, I'm interested, but I grilled them like, like, so what, how does that work? You know, I have one, but because we have an alarm system here there, but it's, it's wired and I don't have a phone line anymore. See, ours is ours is wireless. Cause we don't have a phone line. Exactly. But exactly. the, the one thing that interests me and, and it must be a major issue all over the place, but it surprises me the number of, these companies that are quick to market with a water sensor for you to put in your basement. Yeah. To sense like your basement's flooding, like you better get home and fix it or, or you're going to be flooded. Like that's the one product that I see all these companies doing is, is a cell based some kind of water detection. We well, got think no matter where you're at, wherever there's an AT&T store, there's somebody that lives by a river. Mm-hmm. we're very much on top of the hill yes. here flooding if the flooding is happening we got a big freaking problem i mean you can flood a portion i mean my 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 tub over there is flood from the drainage from the from the laundry right mm-hmm. and that's creeped over here you know i mean other than other than that you know i don't, I don't know if that would help in that little bit of, of a yeah and i think this is more meant but, for mass like more more of like you're going to be underwater yes. from the freaking nature yes yes um <laughs> but anyways uh but anyways back to so but if to, you did but think about it if you did spring a leak and your drain got clogged mm-hmm. you'd start building up mm-hmm. and it clogged under the door over there mm-hmm. yeah so uh but but you know they're really promoting that they're promoting these centers they're promoting their, they, we talked to him about I, I guess he i think he said the uh, up at the mills they have one of these first stores where they're converting their wireless stores because right now you go in and they're like here's all their wireless stuff and here's all our tv stuff now it's going to be and here's all our music stuff that you can do with us and here's all the home automation and then this stuff and and and, and, and all that so it's it's and these are partners they are actually in some cases helping some of these products get to market using their channels to push mm-hmm. them through you know via their stores via other other channels other access using their resources uh, and like i said they have kind of a competition for teenagers uh, for high schoolers but they also have like uh, you know we talk about you know incubators like alpha lab and stuff around here they have an application process and you can be awarded money or access or whatnot depending on what you have um and they they accept applications from anybody so i could if i have a great idea to use wireless technology to do x you know what if i got a good idea for wireless podcasting or something right i can go to them you know especially specifically if it surrounds a device 
I mm-hmm. would say. Um, I could go to them and write that up, do the process. And if they approve me, then I get to go to Boston or San Francisco and use their labs. They have a uh, 4G kind of labs in there so you can test a device at various stages. Like they, they were showing a meter, you can pull it down to like 3G and see how it operates, for instance. And all the way up to the 4G LTE, um, but it's not on a broad network. It's shielded. So you're just on, so you're beta testing this thing. You don't mm-hmm. want it on a public network. Um, you know, look at all the people that were eyeballing the next iPhone on the cell towers and, and everything or on uh, on web stats, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, back in the day. I need an arc. I will need an arc if it gets wet up here. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. Um, but 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 it's really cool. And, and it's, um, you know, it's, and they also talk about some other and they, they got some great initiatives, but the big it's definitely. But hey, look how good our corporation is kind of thing, of course. But that's what it is. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, dude, we've all dealt with big corporations. I'm sure. You know, you, you too, when you really had the goodwill kind of side mm-hmm. of things, but it's like the raw, raw go us thing. Um, but I, I thought it was really good I, I, as a service provider. I still think the way I do about them, but, but as far as like some of the other things they're doing and showing, you know, I love seeing what the small guys are doing, but it's also cool to see what the big guys do too. Um, I mean, we were comparing a lot. Uh, in our conversations afterwards. And, and, and I think with one of the Verizon guys was actually talking with us too about like what Google's doing with all their money and building all this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. That we talk about every week and it makes the news. What how how Amazon's going by with drones and whatnot to deliver toilet paper to me, you know. Um and, and then there's this stuff that Verizon's doing. Um a lot of uh a lot of really cool stuff. There was actually a really good conversation I tagged in here because they're like, okay, what are you guys into? And they're like, well, you know, what are you guys what are you guys doing with wearables? What do you guys think about what's happening with that? Um, there's one fellow that I lost a card for um, who actually does social media for a local ad agency. And they were talking about they're looking at wearables. They're looking at being able to give you a coupon when you're next to that place and stuff like that. Or to know that you go to X place so many times and, you know, be able to give you a reward or something well, like that. One of the things I'm interested for in that, 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 that area of technology, and I know we have to give up some of our privacy to get what we want Mm -hmm. i want the ability especially if you're in a mall that you don't frequent or or what wherever a build especially buildings like going around pittsburgh and you're looking for an office or something like that in a a specific building i want on my phone i want the map and the floor layout or the mall layout so it I don't mm-hmm. want to have to go to the like to some random corner of the mall from where I'm at because we know they're usually in the four corners those those you are here map type things. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have to go to the opposite corner of the mall to see. Okay, I know I'm here now because I had to walk all the way here to get to this map. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see the place <laughs> on the way here. So so where is like what I'm looking for? And that's where like especially on our floors I could see it because our conference rooms are not they're they're very randomly placed and mm-hmm. they're not they're they're not consistent floor to floor so like some floors you may have all of the conference rooms around the center of the building and offices along around the outside some of them you may have the conference rooms around the outside but the offices in the center with the cubes in between some of them they're just mm-hmm. random hmm. The, this is an office. This just, is a conference room. It's just adapting a very old building, I imagine. Yeah, and, and, and it's floor by floor, right? We didn't take all the floors at once, so they mm-hmm. were all built. Oh, we did way. this the last time, and we didn't like how it works, so let's do it a little different this time. That's where like, I want to be able to find things, physical things, mm-hmm. from where I'm physically at. One thing uh, that surprised me was uh, they talked about wearables, and there's a few, uh, few girls in there talking about the... Uh, the uh, baby wearables i didn't know about this where you can like monitor heartbeat and yeah stuff like like, that. like and the breathing while they're while they're sleeping and everything i was like wow that's when i have a kid i'm going to start i, I swear i want to start a whole new tech podcast just on like kid There's, hardware and i talk to different people about different technologies when it comes to that kind of stuff and like some people say like you can get a mat for the for the bed that mm-hmm. can help monitor the, the heartbeat and and whatnot the only thing I'm going to say about that is if you and, and this was just something someone told me and it was a recommendation against some of those products. So is, purely anecdotal. It makes you feel better until the device registers like a false 
negative. Oof. And your heart just sinks and drops because now you think now you're sprinting to the room because now you, you don't trust the device. And right. that's the problem because if a device like like the Mars you're talking about, like like they're like, you know, or just the one I saw went around the checking ankle. checking their breathing. Right. Right. For instance. So you're not don't have to check in the room every five minutes to make sure like, oh, they're OK. You know, are they still good? Or, you know. You know, for you know, because I mean that's touchy when they're that mm-hmm. young, right? Uh, so so you know, you get that that kind of check in on your phone instead, for instance. And there's monitors and you know, baby monitors and stuff. They're you know more interesting and motion censored and uh, you know stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, but again, you have to trust it. You know, right? It's like like you trust your GPS until you don't anymore, right? You know, like well, wait, 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 wait. You know, you know, how many times I see somebody else handle the GPS for me while I'm driving? And then they get fresh. Like, that, that doesn't make sense. Like, well, no, you have to allow. It says right there. This is a guide. Don't depend on this thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you know, I know enough to I look at a map and it doesn't tell me right away. Like Apple Maps, I notice is a little slow on the uptake to tell me to turn. And if I waited for it, and I'm just looking away and da, 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 driving. I'm going to miss the damn turn. Or it's a complicated one where I got to get a lane over. Or I got to make sure I miss, I make this ramp and not, not the road. You know? That actually happened with the, with the onboard GPS in the car. If you're in day. Jersey, if you're in Jersey, give up. I'm going to tell you those, the, the ramp left things, you're not even going to survive well, with it, the GPS. There, there was this weird turn off of, I think it's Brownsville or 51. I think it was Brownsville. And like, it was almost like a U-turn. To, to like turn up the street mm-hmm. but at the u-turn as soon as you did the u-turn there was a fork in the road but then the road ran extremely close but parallel Listen, and sometimes... it actually thought i made the wrong it thought i got on the wrong road but i was actually mm-hmm. on the right road mm-hmm. and you got know enough to be able to look at the gps be like no you're wrong no yeah no you're wrong quit recalculating no, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure you're wrong well because then it spent the next good 20 seconds recalculating twice Mm-hmm. Because it had to recalculate, thinking I was on the wrong and road, and hopefully you didn't have to make the exact next turn. I was right. in ten feet. Yeah. So yeah, I know it, it, it's why it's a guide, and they say mm-hmm. that you know, and, and there's a reason. Other cool things came out of it. This hey, so I I, I asked for this one specifically because I saw it in the little promo video that they put up there, which I'm sure you can probably find on their website too. Something called the Golden Eye. Look at that thing. And that's golden hyphen I. You can go to mygoldeneye.com to find out about it. Uh, the new Gen 3.8 headset computer has been designed to improve productivity, efficiency, and safety in the light industrial sector. Uh, building a building camera and more processing powder. I, I was confused on whether they were talking about this one in particular, but they have something like this that they have for uh, firefighters first responders that will actually kind of see through the smoke and see the mm-hmm. walls and stuff, uh, which is pretty cool. The other thing they were telling me about uh, one of the big innovations that they're very happy with, of course, uh, was the idea that first responders, people are like, they're there, the fire is happening. They ran in. Now they're going to be the last to know all the new information that comes after, mm-hmm. right? Cause they ran in, they're not going to get anything else. Like, you know, I guess suppose they should be getting it on the radio, but did that really work? You know, how many floors up on nine 11, for mm-hmm. instance. Um, but now because of technology like this cell cell technology and everything, they can kind of get through and, uh, and, and they're not the last ones to know now and they can get the new information and, and hopefully be a little safer. Um, which again, my idea, my thought was like, you know, if they had that kind of technology when that happened, you know, maybe, you know, it could have uh, saved a couple extra people there. So, um, but no, some really, really cool stuff there. Um, so I'm going to go look. They actually, they, they, and they also talked a little bit about one of the, I can't remember the name of it. One of the big uh, cloud servers in Carolina, I think. Uh, I think mm-hmm. there may, maybe one in Florida as well. Um, and, and, uh, and, and about how, interesting those those buildings were and i guess they're a part of it or at least their cloud stuff is on it i think because i think it is a whole other company uh oh one's in miami and the other one's in like north carolina or virginia so um i don't know and they said they have standing invitations if i'm ever out in one of the areas to go check the facility out so i'm wondering maybe going to if we go to san francisco this year to check in that one out cool so um but no really cool it was kind of a fun event a lot of familiar faces there because of course it's a blogger thing so I knew a few people there. Um, so, uh, uh, but yeah, 
Uh, so that's if you want to check out some of the stuff we were talking about, like I said, my golden eye.com, the letter I.com uh innovation.verizon.com talks about a little bit of that and get you get to the stuff about their innovation center you can see pictures and videos of some cool stuff that's never going to release like they talked about like there's you saw in that video a, a bicycle with a computer on it we never want to release that because we're, we're gonna get in trouble um but there you go um let's do a quick hit on a few of these i got a quick one that i wanted to talk yeah. about actually yeah yeah so and we, we were talking about cloud storage earlier so Microsoft announced yesterday unlimited OneDrive what? space for free as part of the Office 365 subscription. Is this every subscription? Everything except for business right now. Business. Oh, so that's the bigger one. Yeah, if you're not on the bigger so like, plan. So like, like my wife is on the, um, on personal. the personal. So personal and home, which Get- home is up to five. The personal is up to one, one and one, one computer, one tablet. Yeah. So, yeah, those two should be getting it within the next few days. And I think there may be a way if you go out and, and look around, there's a way to, I think, try to bump yourself to the top of the list. Mm-hmm. But and I, and I actually linked to the nine to five Mac story because I thought they had the nicest chart on who charges what. So one drive, you're looking at at, at its cheapest. Six ninety nine a month for unlimited data in the cloud. Hmm. Google Drive fifteen gig free, and it can go all the way up to a hundred bucks a month for ten terabytes. Three hundred bucks, and I'm paying. I'm paying the ten terabytes. for a terabyte myself. Okay. Then you get to iCloud five gig free, twenty gig a dollar, up to a terabyte twenty bucks. And um, Microsoft, why you got to do this to me? When here's the kicker is I, I'm really considering and, it now. And, or and it's one of those or, things where, or do I just upgrade the six ninety nine we're already paying to the ten dollar one? And the six dollar six ninety nine. Oh, because then you'll both because she it. already has one, and it's yeah. up to five computers. I'll cover anything I'm using, and now I'm using Office, I guess. But and you get six sixty minutes, I think, a year of international Skype calling. That to me, that's not that big of a deal, but. <laughs> I look at it as I I don't know. I call Toronto no problem on Google Hangout. So, you, I mean, you're getting all of Office, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, Access, Sway. Publisher, Sway. <laughs> um, but yeah, seven bucks a month, and I mean, you're talking. I think it's eight dollars if you're looking at at the other version. You get a year's worth. It's sixteen percent off or something like that. But. And and they're already starting to talk about the next versions. Or Office twenty sixteen is going to be out middle middle to late next year. Um, I don't. I mean, to me, this. I've been looking for online storage, and I've been waiting and waiting and waiting, figuring the war is just going to continue, especially because Apple reduced all their pricing. You know, and you know, Google's going to respond to this. Google's going to respond to this. But And and if I mentioned on the show that I'm already paying the dollar a month to upgrade my, my cloud drive just for backups. <laughs> so, and I look at it like, I'm trying to also look at what, services interact with the most amount of devices in my house as well Mm -hmm. so the ability to like do a slideshow as a screensaver on my cable box or my xbox or whatever like i'm trying to take all of this into account and and do i have the need for three even even 10 terabytes of data not really but I don't know. I have probably an easy. F- 30 gig of like photos and videos and like See, and, just and, stuff and also, that I've had. And also from, we're backing up in different ways. Yeah. So I'm looking at it as I'm going to push like all my eye. Like I take every once in a while and do a dump of all the photos on my phone. Yeah. Yeah. See, I we, we're definitely doing that different ways because, again, I, you know, I'm doing Google Drive is where I put all my work files in. Right. Um, I have a terabyte there. And that's everything that's important on this laptop is in Google Drive. And I select mm-hmm. out what's going to what folders sit on this because there's only a 250 gigabyte right. drive on this computer. 
Um, I have 20 gigabytes of Dropbox from all the invites that I've sent out over the years. I'm not even paying for Dropbox at this point. Right. And I have a couple of things, kind of legacy clients and stuff that still, I still have folders for them. Um, cause you know, I'm not going to make the move and they're not doing too big of files. Um, but now it's like, and, and then everything on my computer that's hooked up to all the external drives with all the backups is hooked up to Backblaze, which is unlimited as it mm-hmm. is not accessible anywhere as much. But it's unlimited. Everything's backed up. So even if I use that in another service like this, I'm not going to take all of that and also put it up on one drive. It'd be ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm not really using anything except for there's like the critical. I have like a favorites photo collection of like all kinds of old family photos and stuff that I've been keeping for right. for years and years and years. I scanned right. old slides, um, things of that nature. I have those backed up in Dropbox, but this would give me kind of that. You know what? I'll just throw it all up there. <laughs> you know what? There's there's nothing incriminating, nothing, nothing that that if it got out into the public that I'd be that worried. Um, and I'd probably still keep a, it synced with a drive locally. So. God forbid something happened with the cloud or local on my on a machine at, at, at home, but. I don't know, I'm just looking at this unlimited file storage and, and they're thrown in office seven bucks a month. To me, it's a, it's an easy, and that, and that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for everyone else to respond to see where this goes. I can't imagine Google coming back and saying, you know what? We're just going to give everyone unlimited for free. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of feel like that's the way it's going to go. Isn't it? Um, interesting. Uh, this, this came over the wire from from the wife upstairs. Uh, AT and T, uh, well, FTC says AT and T misled cover customers over unlimited data. Lawsuit filed. The FCC filed the lawsuit too, so it's not just like FTC and the FCC. FCC Federal Communications. This, this Commission? one says FTC in an article well, at CBS Commission. Pittsburgh. Ah. Have, uh, actually. Um, so uh, it's over the fact that they started throttling anybody that went over a certain amount, even though they had unlimited data. Uh, I'm wondering if T-Mobile would be, well, they're saying that they didn't, that the argument is that they didn't, uh, adequately notify everybody, which I'm iffy on that. Cause I know I got the text messages at like 50% of my data mm-hmm. that they would be throttling. throttling. So, and they said they put it on bills and stuff. So I don't know. Uh, we'll see. I'm sure I'll have another settlement check coming in. I've been getting a lot of those. It's weird. Hmm. It's, it's weird. Uh, Apple, I got one for a warranty one. It was like a couple hundred bucks. Nice. And then I got one for uh, actually a certain bank. I won't mention um, for a withdrawal or overdraft. Overdraft. Overdraft thing. So, cool. But anyways, Apple, if you if you have a MacBook Pro and I can't remember what the year year of the model it is they're, yeah they're gonna go through a class action lawsuit. i think it's like a 2010 2011 i, yeah. I think i skirted There's around a gpu that. issue yeah. yeah yeah actually mine might be in that because i think that's one of the things that started going when it started going when it got that green sheen thing to mm-hmm. it all right we got a few other things uh uh real quick uh shouts to uh matt collins for pass around uh real a pit student graduate student designs an app to enhance laser light shows uh, at Matt Carlin's is our friend from KDKA over there. Uh, so this was an app that I guess controlled the light on your phone because we we're talking about that. Okay. And uh, so so if you're at a concert, everybody pulls up their phones and they start controlling the lights. The venue or the, can control the lights and start controlling. That's the lights pretty cool. And do some cool stuff. The app is called Nimbus N Y M B U S. If you want to check it out, I just want to throw a mention out there since we were talking about that this week. And there's an article that we tweeted out on our, our and it's on all over our social media for the week as well. Amazon goes after Roku and Chromecast with a $39 fire TV stick. Here it goes guys. And I think it's even cheaper Here right now. If you're a prime really? member. Oh, really? I think you might be able to get it for like, $19 or something if you're an existing wow. Prime member. It's only good for like a week or two while supplies last. Says, so. Last chance. Offer ends October 29th at 6 a.m. <laughs> oh, I'm tempted. I don't need one. I don't even have another TV I could plug it into. The, the thing I like about the I'm not going to lie. The thing I like about the Amazon devices, it'll actually let you screencast anything that's Miracast enabled. It comes with a remote. And it comes with a remote. So so I don't need a phone. I can just turn it on and start doing. Oh, damn. 
And and there's the interesting thing, and they really, I, it's interesting because I feel like they cable TV'd the 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 thumb type casting device. So thirty nine bucks, I think it's you can get it nineteen right now for a limited time. Like I said, if you're an Amazon Prime member, but then there's like upgrades, right? So it comes with a remote, but for I think an additional like twenty bucks, you can get the voice remote. Otherwise, on your phone, you have to use an app to be able to do voice search. Then for an additional X amount more, obviously, you can pick up the game controller. Like they're really making it where you can you can buy this device that's really, really cheap and then just keep adding on to it to the point where you just go buy the ninety nine dollar fire TV. This is interesting. Um, So it's telling me pre order now orders placed today will arrive after Christmas. Or are they just saying that? I don't know. Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, but I've I've thought about buying one because it's mirror cast and mode. also it and also it does you can buy the controller and play Android games on it too. Yes. But they said they're they're promoting different games, so it's probably not gonna be as powerful as what you would get if you got the actual Fire TV mm-hmm. device. But still I'm really kind of curious about that. I'm really kind of curious. I imagine anything I get on the Amazon store, I can get on the Amazon store on the phone or the tablet. So I don't just have it on the TV and you don't need it. And this goes back to my thing that my issue with Chromecast, you don't have to have another device there yeah. to control. I'm going to lose the crap out of that, out of that controller. <laughs> yeah, it is. But Let's the, be honest. Let's but I think, be honest. But there's also a controller app for your phone. So you don't necessarily need it. But if it's like, oh, I don't feel like booting up my phone, like Hulu hasn't been syncing with my Chromecast very good on my phone. But my tablet's been fine. And I think it's because they just did a crazy update on the phone. Mm-hmm. Like they completely redesigned it. And I think they broke something with Chromecast. I mean, it works eventually, but it just it takes, takes a while. It takes some fandangling to do. Um, but anyways. All right. On that point. Uh, shouts. Uh, first, uh, Wireless Warrington. We talked several weeks ago with the guys up at uh, the hardware store uh, up on Warrington Avenue in Pittsburgh about Meta Mesh, the wireless initiative. They're actually having a launch party on November 13th. It's on meetup.com or just go up and go look up the hardware store Pittsburgh and they should have any info all around there and check out our video. We have a short over on uh, youtube.com slash and awesome cast of just our discussion about Meta Mesh, Meta Mesh, excuse me. Also, uh, Life Shell is uh, still on Kickstarter. They're still kicking over there. They got six days left. They got a good ways to go uh, to meet their goal. If you pay fifty-seven dollars, you'll get the whistle, the whistle uh, case, which uh, includes a, a, a whistle device uh, that helps. You know, if you're not feeling safe and you're carrying your phone around with you, uh, they're really good about. You know, they're they're pushing to kind of help defeat kind of. Uh, 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 sexual assault and everything. Uh, so go check them out. Uh, Lifeshell.com, one L, uh, to find out more about them. And they got a Kickstarter out there. Uh, also, another shout to your jagoff.com. He's got that link on the side to get you get jagoff in the Webster's dictionary. There's a petition going on right now. Get jagoff.com. He's got a, uh, I don't know if he has it up, but he did have an interview with Katie. Katie, oh, it is up because I did, I did get a chance to listen to it. He had an interview with KDKA radio recently. So I'll see if I can tweet the link out for that to help that out as well. And of course, PodCamp Pittsburgh, podcamppittsburgh.com, November 22nd through 23rd. Um, we'll be around. We'll be streaming. You'll, you'll want to tune in. It's going to be fun. So with a, with a meet and greet at Ikea. Meet and greet at Ikea? Meet and greet at Ikea. That's an interesting one. That's awesome. How they What, what made them select Ikea? Sponsorship? Or I just... don't think we selected Ikea. You think Ikea selected you? I think Ikea selected us. I'm not on a committee, but I'm, I think I, I'm going to purely speculate that Ikea was interested to host us. I have no idea. Uh, officially, cool. I, officially, I have no idea. But Swedish I think, meatballs all around. Yes. Yes. I love me some uh, no, it is, they've had a lot of blogger events out there, too. I know mm-hmm. like the mommy bloggers have had a lot of events out there. It's really made sense for that. And, and um, uh, from the people I know that have gone to them, they said they're really, they're really good events. So uh, I'm really interested. And plus, light up nights the same night in town. So it's really good that we're going the opposite way. So and and if you're worried about getting the light up night, the times that we're doing it, um, it sounds like anybody who's interested to go to that and night up light should have plenty of time to do both. Cool. Because we'll be done by nine. Nice. So. So podcamppittsburgh.com. Check out stuff that there's some great posts up there. Uh, Kim Lyons did one of PodCamp presenters past. 
including Pittsburgh Dad, Mikey and Bob uh, from the Kiss Morning Freak Show, uh, uh, Ginny and Woy, uh, Pit Girl, mm-hmm. and the whole situation there. Uh, so great classic videos going on there. Some other posts going up. Um, oh, what was the other one? Of course, our spotlight we did uh, with uh, uh, Amanda from uh, Pits- Bold Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Bold. I'll, I'll, I'll remember which way. Uh, we got a video that we did here in the studio about that, about how she was inspired and, and, and grew that out of uh, sessions that she attended at PodCamp in the years past. So uh, so if anybody has any, like I was inspired from PodCamp stories, um, I'd love to, you know, hey, hit me up. Uh, I'd love to have a conversation with you. Maybe we'll feature it on the site. So with that, Chilla, anything else you want to kick out there? I don't think so. Awesome. I got, I got all my stuff out there. Check yeah. me out down there at the Chilla on the Twitter. Chilla. Down right at there. At Chilla on the Twitters. Right there. Have your tech conversations with him. This MacBook is not a touchscreen. Ugh. Ugh. Anyways. Uh, you should get stickers made. Join us. Not a touchscreen. <laughs> just put it on the corner. Uh, I need to do that to the one at, the, at my one uh my one client because they have a giant nice 27 inch iMac and there's just fingerprints every week when i come in there um we're recording live here you can join us tuesdays at 6 30 p.m eastern time and live.sorgatronmedia.com uh you can join us at awesome cast on the twitters i'm at sorgatron he's at chill on the twitters awesome cast on facebook on google plus we're tweeting or we're putting out stories all week the past ones we talked about the ones we're going to be talking about the ones we might sort of kind of want to talk about in the future and it's up awesome cast at sorgatronmedia.com if you got anything you want to email into the show uh please keep commenting like you said we talk if there's anything good we bring it into the show here so if you see any of those clips you have any conversation or if you're on itunes or I'm sorry, if you're on YouTube and you want to put a comment there uh, uh, in pertaining to the show, um, we also have time codes that we've been putting in there so you can go directly to the point of the video uh, that where we're talking about X event and X, you know, uh, you know, the Microsoft conversation or, or something or the other. Um, and those are derived partially from the great comments I just saw pasted into the document by Mike Allen, who helps us out with our tweets and our notes all night long. Uh, you can check him out at Mike Allen PR on the Twitters. He's been helping us for a good while now, actually. Uh, not a touchscreen, damn it, uh, <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on the network. So go check him out. So with that, thank you to our awesome chat room that's uh, been hopping here through the night. Uh, ha- you, thank you, our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs> This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.